Greetings folks, due to my recent enforced uh, holiday from flying, I thought it would be a good idea to catch up on my past planes videos. These are videos that I look back at planes that I have owned or flown or been given for review and um, let you know sort of the long term thoughts on whether I kept them, what I thought of them, uh, stuff like that. So. Past planes 18, and we are back in about mid 2019. So many planes. Anyway, the first one we're going to talk about is this uh, Dancing Wings lighting. I think they've misspelt that. Uh, but anyway, it's an EPP, uh, quite sort of flexible, lightweight plank with a motor, slightly swept forward wings. This was very generously sent to me by uh, Jean Pierre. Mel Herb from Canada. Thanks very much, Jean Pierre. Uh, this I really like this plane. It's a it's a super lightweight, under two hundred and fifty grams. Close proximity, uh, whipping around. It would be great for sort of combat if you put little streamers on the back with a couple couple of mates chasing each other around. It can do loops just about in its own length, and uh, you can fly it super slowly, and but it's still super agile. It's also fantastic on the slope uh, in light wind. Cruises around beautifully because it's got a fair bit of uh, wing area for the sub 250 gram weight. Uh, plenty of space to sort of move things around in your fuselage there for balance and different battery types. What have we got? Uh, it is uh, 1806. 2000 kV motor with a 5x4 prop and it all just adds up to a lot of fun in a, a lightweight package. As with a lot of these uh, dancing wing planes they use this sort of rough and floppy EPP which adds a fair bit of drag but they make them light and with a lot of wing area so it's got uh, light wing loading and a bit of drag which means that uh, sloping on any sort of wind uh, you can get this thing as well as the Eagle which we'll talk about in a little little minute you can get them to just sort of sit there and hover on the slope which is a lot of fun restful relaxing sloping if you want to just treat it like a kite really and, and hover it up above you good fun anyway I highly recommend this um, it comes as a kit I think so you just add your own motor and servos super lightweight stuff keep it as light as possible there's some uh, reinforcing there I think the tail isn't reinforced but I have added some uh, carbon fiber strip in the tail there just to make it a bit stiffer sort of light and flexy but it is a slow flyer a floater uh, just a really really nice design kind of like the um, Alula I suppose uh, with a motor great plane that's a keeper I'll always hang on to that one okay next up we come to the Sonic model binary which is a very interesting plane I really really like the binary I love the way it looked I don't have it anymore I really like the shape of the fuselage. I thought that was just really aesthetically pleasing to me and nicely aero, uh, uh, aerodynamic. Uh, twin motor with landing gear and all the bells and whistles, lights and uh, all that sort of stuff. But it did have a problem in that it was designed to fly reasonably fast and you couldn't really fly it slowly without it wanting to tip stall. And there's something about this style of plane and the way I like to fly, it just didn't fly at the nice slow speed that I really like flying at. The planes that I really get attached to are usually slow flyers. Uh, and, and this just looked like a plane that should have been able to fly slow, but because of the uh, reasonably small wing area and, and sort of decent weight, uh, the wing loading was too high and the wing was just sort of not the right shape to make it a slow flyer. Um, and a lot of people have been crashing them because they fly them at what seems like a reasonable speed, but uh, it's not fast enough to keep it from tip stalling. I like the way it flew much better when I added uh, some extra wing area and I just glued some Depron onto the trailing edge of the wing uh, and across all the control surfaces and that actually brought the stall speed down to uh, a level that seemed reasonable for me for that particular plane. It just seemed to fly the way I wanted it to. I think it still is a great plane, uh, just that as is, you just have to remember that you fly it at, at slightly higher than normal speed, I would say. I also experimented by putting the Ishin airloader wing on the binary, and that flew reasonably well, but uh, uh, I haven't got it anymore. I basically modded it too much and uh, 
could use the electronics for other things, so I uh, stripped it basically and threw away the foam and I still have all the electronics. In fact, I have the electronics on the Crosswind Mini, the beast that this did, did this to me. Anyway, it, it's, it's healing very nicely. You can see the bandage is getting smaller every day. I did try INAV on the Sonic Model Binary uh, before I increased the wing area, and it did surprise me with a uh, uncontrolled tip stall and spiral into the ground when I was doing a return to home. That was a combination of uh, the characteristics of the Sonic Model Binary and the sort of rudder over action uh, using INAV if you don't set it up properly. Uh, the rudder had too much authority and INAV, INAV was overusing it whenever it was doing a turn so it would sort of uh, dip too far into the turn and that just tipped the uh, Sonic Model Binary into the tip stall. So I could, yeah, as it was, I could never really trust it to fly at the speed that seemed natural for me. Next up is the Volantex Super Cub. And this is, was a ready to fly plane. So it comes with transmitter, uh, battery charger, uh, receiver, stabilizer, all inbuilt. Uh, and it has one of those crazy overactive stabilizers that, that makes it uh, totally stable, but flies like a wiggly little bee or something like that. It's just uh, crazy, really. Uh, it, it probably would be good if someone didn't know anything about RC and just wanted to dip their toe in flying an RC plane um, and uh, I suppose it could be a good beginner's plane really if you had no gear at all. It doesn't really teach you a lot about flying properly in the proper sense and those sort of built-in stabilizers uh, with these small cubs, the XK style models, I, I really don't like them. They're just they're way too overactive and for a beginner to set them up if something goes wrong well you know it's just a nightmare basically it makes the learning experience a lot harder than it should be anyway this was a mid-sized toy i suppose uh, I, I did eventually uh, rip out the receiver stabilizer like i normally do with these sorts of things and, and put a normal receiver and it, it that was just a, a nice little small sized cub i suppose uh, so so it had its good points i like the sort of extra size compared to the smaller toy models uh, really didn't like the stabilizer it's just overactive but you could use it as a good base for building your own plane okay now to another dancing winds model this is the dw eagle this is the uh, the big version the version 2 or the i think it's 1400 millimeter version this is a brilliant plane or a model or whatever you want to call it just fantastic it uh, flies around beautifully uh, what have i got uh, i've got a I think I've got about a 950 kV motor on there, uh, I think, from Carbon Bird, that is. I don't know what it is, really. And uh, uh, Volantex, that'll be a 10x6 prop, uh, running on 3S. I actually have a, a flight control board in here at the moment, which I haven't used yet. I've got my FPV set up and everything. Again, this is the sort of the, the rough, textured and floppy EPP. Certainly not designed to be a, a fast flyer, uh, definitely a, f a slow flyer, just floating around and unbelievably good on the slope. This thing is just looks like an eagle on the slope. It is so good. Uh, the birds hate it. The uh, seagulls hate it. The magpies chase it and try and get rid of it. Uh, and again, it can just hover because of the extra drag and the uh, low wing loading. It can just hover uh, on the slope in one spot, which just looks fantastic, I think. I love this plane, just brilliant. It is sort of soft and squishy, um, but you know, it's not meant to fly fast. It's not meant to be loaded up with big batteries. It's just meant to be a, a floaty, uh, fun, easy flying experience. And it uh, works really well with the folding prop too. You may need to chop away a bit of the beak or something, put a little bit of extra uh, reinforcing down here because it's, uh, it's all pretty weak and floppy. A little bit of carbon reinforcing. Um, I think I've got my tails on upside down, but it really doesn't matter. Just a brilliant and quirky and uh, weird model. I wish there were more um, selections like this, like a big pelican or something like that. That'd be great. So the DW Eagle 2, brilliant plane. If you're a little bit interested in it, don't hesitate. It's a, it's a ripper. It's worth having. And my INAV FPV flight will be coming up soon.
Okay, next up is the XKX450. That's a tricopter VTOL little delta wing sort of thing. Um, I would class it as an expensive toy, expensive delicate toy. Amazing flyer, but uh, really not worth the money, I don't think. Can't remember how much they cost, but uh, I was glad that was a re review model and not something I'd bought myself. I had problems with it straight away. I think one of my uh, tilting motor cogs had, had slipped or something like that, so it's kind of out of whack and it, um, uh, it crashed pretty quickly, broke some plastic, and then you know you're in trouble if you, unless you, you're good at repairing things, which luckily I could do. Um, you basically have to throw it away, and it's you know hundred dollars or so or some something ridiculous like that. As I said, amazing technology, but um, yeah, just a toy, just an expensive toy to me. Not my kind of thing at all. Some people love them. Uh, there's a reasonably big following on RC groups, I think, but uh, yeah, not for me. Once again, I stripped that apart and uh, kept the bits and pieces, and I still have the little motors, and they're the motors I used on the chuck lighter video that I did just recently. Uh, so you can, you know, salvage the parts if you do crash it there are some uh, quite usable uh, motors at least that come out of that okay now we come to the c1 chaser or the chaser c1 wing this is my favorite wing it's in the same design vein as the uh, z84 and the fx uh, 61 and the fx 79 the big buffalo they're all this same, this nice sort of sinuous curvy shape which i really like and the centralized fins too which I think gives less wiggle than the winglets on the end. This is kind of the middle sized one, 1.2 meter wingspan. Nothing special, comes as a kit so you put your own gear in it. Uh, very cheap to buy uh, as long as they're still available, I hope they are. No fancy pockets or anything, you just cut holes where you want things to go basically. I have mine set up with iNav, there's a GPS over there, uh, receiver over there and video camera and transmitter on the top it's uh, there's plenty of space to put a little flight control board in there ESC tucks up in the back not a big space for battery so uh, I think it can barely fit my sort of standard uh, 3300 4S battery but it uh, goes really well with a 2200 4S battery and the thing I like about this plane is that it's super efficient, can fly around on three amps or so, and smooth. It is one of the smoothest wings around, I find. Probably not perfect for a long range setup. Uh, you can use lithium iron, a 4S lithium iron pack works really well with this one because of the low current draw. One thing about these planes is uh, the motor is, is usually mounted right in, in here. I always sort of extend them out out so that the, the motor can be mounted externally uh, and that just sort of cuts down on the noise with the, the prop not being so close to the trailing edge. They are all quite noisy these ones but this sort of quietens it down quite a lot. On this one I have a Sunny Sky 1100 I think it is, 1100 kV 2212 and 8x4 prop and that's a nice sort of uh, not excessively fast just a, a beautiful efficient cruisy setup. Favourite wing I really like the AR wing over there somewhere. Uh, that's sort of low fuss uh, and you know tough and uh, easy to set up. This one is smoother, more efficient, and I prefer flying this one to be honest. C1 Chaser, it's a classic. It's one of the um, one of the my just right planes. Uh, if I was to keep just one wing, it would be this one. Okay, next up is the EDO uh, Skywing. 680 uh, that's a little 680 millimeter black wing sort of a deep body delta shaped wing geek buying as someone sent it to me for review it was an interesting little wing but i found it uh, oh that's fun to fly it's sort of nippy agile and um, uh, easy to fly basically easy to launch and everything uh, but it was just a little bit too wiggly i, I really don't like the sort of wiggly bobbly wings uh, which a lot of them are especially the little ones uh, and this was quite uh, bobbly and wiggly. So, yeah, it was okay, but yeah, I just didn't like that wiggliness, basically. So it didn't last long, unfortunately. Uh, I think I gave that one away to a friend as well, who is a, a mad wing aficionado. Okay, next up, we come to the Dynam Mustang V2. I'm not a big Warbird fan, um, but 
all my friends have Mustangs and they all rave about how good they are to fly and they actually are. The Mustang is a great uh, plane to have as a scale model for the way it flies. This Dynam Mustang, uh, it's not a high quality model, it's, it's quite old. I think it's made of sort of weaker polystyrene, whatever, EPO foam or whatever it is. Uh, cheap quality retracts that, that stop working at the first landing sort of thing. <laughs> Great looking plane, but yeah, it's not it's not sort of high, uh, you know, horizon hobby quality or FMS quality, I suppose. But when it was sent to me for review, or when I chose it for review, I, I always knew that it wasn't going to be great quality components, but uh, I was always going to uh, adapt it to my own uses. And, and what I do with these planes usually is take all the retracts out, uh, lighten it up, maybe even put it on 4S instead of 3S, Make it a belly lander. I actually shaved off the the air scoop on the bottom, which will um, which will have the experts cringing, I suppose. But uh, I don't have a decent runway at my flying field where I fly, the part of the field I fly anyway. It sort of kind of has to be a, a belly lander. Uh, and yeah, when I put it onto four S, it it really came alive. It it really does fly. These Mustangs really do fly beautifully they're beautifully smooth and sort of authoritative when they're flying especially with fpv on it too and panning fpv it really does feel like you're flying a, a warbird i did lots of mods to it for different fpv setups and really enjoyed it uh, but it, it wasn't built to last it's just sort of weak foam um, so i enjoyed it while i had it but now it's, uh, it's in the bin basically as usual i kept the components and uh, got rid of the foam and that's the same with the next one, the Nice Sky F35C EDF, which was probably even lower quality than the Dynam Mustang, I think. Had a, a weak little EDF on it uh, that was so weak that I couldn't take off in the le length of my cricket pitch. Was that 22 metres or something like that? Uh, I had to hand launch it, and even then I would only just get it in the air. Then I'd have to go full throttle just about to keep it in the air. So, of course, the flights weren't very long. Uh, I guess unless you have a the big 6S batteries and a, a decent quality EDF, it's, it's they're going to be pretty pathetic. However, once again, I treated it just as a, a base for my own mods, and uh, I turned it into a pusher, uh, pusher prop, uh, and uh, put it on 4S, and uh, it turned into a really, really good plane to fly. It, unfortunately, the hinges on the elevons were, were very... Um, weak, they're sort of only about that much foam for the hinges and they're quite you know big surface areas so I had to do a lot of strengthening down the, the back of the uh, the tail area uh, but I eventually got it flying really well uh, really fast too, it just looked sensational in the sky, made a decent noise too with the, the, the uh, pusher prop and again I put panning FPV on that one and it was just uh, fantastic to fly like that but low quality foam uh, lots of mods didn't last very long, so basically once I'd had my fun with that, I cut it up and threw it away.